Hi everybody, it's Lisa. Time for another Verbling class. It's 9 p.m. Pacific time. I'm in Washington State in the United States and this hour we are going to have another writing class. Um, in these classes you have the opportunity to practice writing in English and during the class I give you lots of different types of things uh, to be writing about, questions, some writing prompts, describing some pictures. I also include at least one um, question or statement that you either agree with or disagree with and that's for people who are practicing their writing for the TOEFL exams. So if people need to uh, take tests for English proficiency, for example, then they can practice their writing because on some of those tests you need to write essays, not just uh, short answers to questions, but actually like a five paragraph essay or something like that. So um, if you would like to join this class, you'll be able to uh, join by clicking on the green button. Hi Rosie, how are you? I'm going to put the link to the uh, Google Doc up in the Verbling chat so that people can begin going there. And this is going to be a Google document that has the questions on it and where you can, we will be writing there actually. So I just put it up, but I'm not seeing it go up in the Verbling chat, so I'm not sure what that is. I might have to wait and see if um, it works just in the Google Hangout chat. Uh, we'll have to see because I'm noticing it's not going in right now. Okay, so I'm going to be talking for a little bit. Actually, I'll go put it on the screen share. If you want to join the class, go ahead and click on the green Join Class button, and that will bring you in to the Google Hangout, and then we can get started with today's uh, writing topics. Um, some students like to attend this class regularly as it gives them the opportunity to uh, write. Writing in English is something that maybe you don't really do that much on your own as a way of studying because maybe it's difficult for you to come up with topics and just write for no reason. So it's kind of nice to have a regular one or two hours a week perhaps where you come to class and you get the opportunity to write and also What's fun about it is the other students are also answering the questions and writing, so they um, it's fun to, to see what they uh, write and listen to them read what they wrote. And then you can also obviously learn as I am helping to correct their writing as well. So I, I see lots of funny things happening um, in the Google Hangout. <laughs> People's pictures are coming and going. Right before I was ready to start my class, my computer did not work. <laughs> so I don't know what the problem was with my computer, but I am on another computer that I uh, use sometimes. And so I've never used it for a verbaling class before, so we'll see how it goes. Um, welcome, everybody. How is everybody? Ayada? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, hello. Okay, good. Hi, Lendit. How are you doing? I'm fine, Hi, thank you. Hi. Hi, Marie Jose. Okay, so let's see how is this going to work here because I'm getting a lot of problems on my side. Okay, so um, I guess my verbling chat is not working, so I'm going to put Neither mine. Link. Oh, yours isn't either? Okay. So I'm going to put the link to the Google Doc in... Um, in the chat, the Google chat. Also, I'm going to have it on a screen share here so people can see it. I will also put the link um, in the document so that people, if you're watching, maybe you can get there too. It's kind of a long link though, so I don't know how that's going to work so well. You'll be able to see it. Okay, that's the link to this document if you want to um, come and join us. So everybody, I think everybody who's here, Mar, hi there, Facundo. Hi, Lisa. Hi there, Fernando. Welcome everybody. Lendit's here. Maria's here. Maria Jose and Nong and Yada. Okay, I, I think you guys are all very familiar with how we could do this here. So um, today 
I will just uh, tell you, I'll just go over briefly the questions. So I did another one of those uh, comparisons. So we, in the first question, we have two pictures here with two di very different types of houses, a very modern house and one a more traditional uh, type of house. So you could uh, just kind of talk a little bit about the differences, describing each one and seeing how they're different. Uh, number two is another picture. Uh, you can describe what you see in this picture, what is going on in the picture, for example. And number three is a question, are parents good teachers of their children? Explain and give examples. So you would take a, take a side, maybe yes or no, or sometimes, sometimes not, that kind of thing. Uh, number four is write an email to a friend telling them that you have been sick for the past week or so, but still plan to make it to the big soccer game on the weekend. So that would be something that you just make up and uh, write a short email to your friend. And the next one is, do you think the TV has a good influence on people or a negative influence? And how so? And explain. Number six is another picture. What is happening in this picture? Explain. And uh, would you like to ride a camel someday? And number seven is the TOEFL question. It says, do you agree or disagree with this statement? There is no reason to study the past because we live in the present. And for people who are working on the TOEFL, it's a good idea to try to write four to five paragraphs. An introduction, a couple of supporting paragraphs, and then a conclusion paragraph. Okay, does anybody have any questions before you start? I see that most of you have already started. So some people um, have been able to get to the document, so it seems like we have 11 people looking at the document. If you're watching the class and you want to write on the document but you are not in the Google Hangout, uh, you can do that. You just have to um, just write on the document and then tell me that you're not in the class and then that way I can read it uh, out loud. Otherwise, everybody who's in the Google Hangout, just let me know when you have finished the first uh, answer to any of those questions and you're ready to read. Yeah. So, and I'm going to see if maybe I can let them know that the Verbling chat is not working. I can do that here. Okay. If anybody has any questions or um, wants to tell me something, just let yeah. me know. Yes, I have one. Okay. Uh, the first, the first, uh, how can I describe the shape of the first house. I don't know the I don't know the the word like uh with without angles. I don't know I don't know. Yeah, that's I don't know if there's a technical term for that. You could just say that it doesn't have any straight straight uh, um okay. yeah straight lines or straight uh, corners. Okay. Yeah, like, uh -huh. Straight edges or something like that. Yeah, how do you write, how do you spell uh, tipis, the houses that use the Indians, like the, mm -hmm. yeah, from America, they, they have like a tipis, how do you? Chosa, chosa. Yeah, well, how do you write it? Tipis, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a T-E-E, -E. well, there's a couple different ways. The easy way is T-I-P-I. -I. Okay, I'm going to use that. Yeah, T-I-P, yeah. <laughs> You can also spell it T-E-E-P-E-E, -E -E -E, but T-I-P-I -I is easy. Okay, <laughs> thank you.
So I'm just going to talk a little bit while you guys are writing. There's uh, There are people watching the class right now, so I'm just going to let them know a little bit about how this works. Um, so if you are new to Verbling, um, Verbling is a website that offers uh, free English classes all day and all night, pretty much, 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, that's part of the website. The other part is also getting a partner to help uh, just do one-on-one -on -one language exchanges and practicing. Uh, the English classes are taught by native English speakers um, of all ages and both men and women and people uh, who live in all different uh, countries around the world. I myself live in Washington State in the United States and um, I do about 10 or 12 classes a week, usually one or two hours um, each day. And I like to do writing classes and reading classes and speaking and uh, vocabulary and all, just mix it up. And so this is a writing class. And so we aren't speaking yet because everybody is writing. So um, Lucas, hi there. How are you? You just joined us. I just want to make sure that you can get to the Google document and that you know how to get started. Hello, Verbling. who are you? Hi there. Hello. Hi. Uh, so we're doing some writing right now. If you want to write, you can join us. Just click on that link that's in the Google chat. The Verbling okay. chat is not working. So if you click on the chat at the top there on the left, you'll be in the Google chat and um, there's the link and then people are just writing answers to the different questions that are here and um, you can get started. Okay, just, type, uh -huh, just type your name so that I know where your stuff is. Hi Carlos, do you know how to do the writing class? I think you're muted. I think your microphone is muted. Okay, Lyndon, I'm gonna get to you as soon as I Make sure these guys. Yeah, That's it. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna work with Lendit now. He's done. He's gonna read it, and I'm going to um, help make any corrections as needed. Okay, Lendit, go ahead. Okay. The first house is made of glass and a kind of plastic. The traditional house is made of hay and sticks. For obvious reasons, the traditional house has no electricity and not and no water and gas. Sometimes traditional houses are more efficient and environment friendly, like tipis they were made by nat Native Americans, which were also mobile. They, they just disassembled them and they were able to move them to another place. On the other hand, modern houses are more comfortable and with a lot of technology that makes life easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, let's see. The first house is made of glass and a kind of plastic. The traditional house is made of hay and sticks. Um, for obvious reasons, okay. It could have a, pe a comma there, but I think I would just make it two separate sentences. For obvious reasons, the traditional house has no electricity and no water and gas. Sometimes traditional houses are more efficient and, we say, environmentally friendly. Oops. i got to figure out how to spell it environmentally friendly, like teepees made by the, and we capitalize, uh, Native Americans, which, like the name, which were also mobile, <coughs> period. They just disassembled the D there, them, and they were able to move them to another place. On the other hand, uh, Come, uh huh. Modern houses are more comfortable, and I would say uh, either come with a lot of technology or and have a lot of technology that makes life easier. Good. Okay. Yeah. Which one would you like to live in? Yeah, uh, the modern house, of course. <laughs> 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 or maybe, so, or maybe something between traditional and modern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when anybody else is ready, just uh, speak up and let me know, and then I will find your writing and then listen to you read it. Lisa, can I read the one, the first one? Uh huh. 
Okay. The green one is. Hold on. Aria? Facundo, okay? Yes. The first one is a modern house probably made by an actual architect. The form of both the modern house and the traditional imply a lot of curves. However, the modern house seems to be more comfortable than the other. Have a lot of windows, though perhaps it's too lighted. The material of both are very different. The first one is built probably with brick with bricks, while the others maybe just with straw and prima material. Okay. Alright, the first one is a modern house, comma. Probably made by an actual architect. The architect is with a CH. Uh, the form of both the modern house and the traditional, uh, I would just say has a lot of curves. However, comma, the modern house seems to be more comfortable than the other. Um, let's see. And then comfortable. What? Oh, yeah, comfortable with an M. Yeah. Um, I would say it has a lot of windows that perhaps um, it is to provide or provide uh, sufficient light. Yeah, though perhaps it uh, has too much light. I think it's what you mean. Not yet. I would say maybe like lets in <laughs> too much light. <laughs> yeah, because all, all the windows. So. Uh, the materials of both are very different with two Fs. Uh, the first one is built probably with, I wouldn't think it's made with bricks, but like uh, Lendit said, probably um, glass and uh, some kind of some kind of plastic materials, probably. Okay. Yeah, I think. <laughs> While the other may in this case, if that's two words, may be just um, made with straw and what do you mean by prima material? Like, um, uh, like things that they could just get in the environment? Y uh, yes, exactly. Ra like raw material. Okay, yeah, like raw material, yeah. And raw materials that uh, I would say that you can find in the environment. Or in the surrounding oh. environment. Yeah. Okay. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Uh huh. Maria Jose, are you ready? Yep. I'll finish yeah. my first one. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. The first house has a modern style with a lot of windows to improve the space's illumination. Also, it is white and doesn't have straight angles. The second one is a handmade shack. It's building mainly of a straw. And it doesn't have window, but the straw makes it fresh. Even though the second one doesn't have a modern style, it's meaning than modern house. The second type of house is used by native people or some farmers. In Colombia, shacks are common in towns that are located in the jungle or deep forest. In my opinion, I would prefer living in first one because I like the comfort and good illumination. Okay, good. Okay, the first house has a modern style with a lot of windows to improve the space's illumination. Okay, I think we would just say uh, lighting. Okay. Yeah, illumination would be more like um, uh, when you actually turn on the lights. And the oh, light, okay. yeah, lighting would is more like like natural lighting. You know, you could oh, say that. Okay. Could, I might say that just to make it more specific that you're talking about natural light from the sun yes. through the windows. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Natural lighting. Um, also, it is white and doesn't have okay. straight angles. The second one is a handmade shack. Um, you could say built mainly of straw, and it doesn't have windows, but the straw uh, makes it, I would say, uh, of, I know what you mean by fresh, but we would say air, um, airy okay. inside. Yeah. And then I would start a new sentence. Even though the second one doesn't have a modern style, 
comma, it is greener than the modern yeah, house. house. Yeah, this, the second time of house is used by native people or some farmers. In Colombia, comma, shacks are common in towns that are located in the jungle or deep, I would say, deep in the forest. In my opinion, comma, I would prefer um, living in the first one because I like the comfort and the good lighting. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. you say, can can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Number one. Okay, you want to read? Okay, go yeah. ahead. The two houses have one similar thing. We can't see any other house in this picture. However, they have a lot of different things. The first, the traditional house is made by straw or grass, but the modern house is made by cement, bricks, special glass. Secondly, they have different shape. I don't know about their say exactly. However, the traditional house makes me image about a house of a Aboriginal. Finally, I don't know about the furniture in this house, but I can guess in my point of view in the modern house has a lot of modern furniture such as technology equipment. Uh, otherwise, in the traditional house only has simple furniture and I think it's quite difficult for me to stay in here. Okay, good. Two, f two houses have one similar thing. Uh, we can't see any other houses in these pictures. However, they have a lot of, uh, we could just say, we can either say a lot of different things or a lot of differences. Okay, the first, the traditional house, okay, I would say first, you don't need to say the first. First, the traditional house is made by straw or grass, and then I would say and, and the modern house is made by cement, bricks, yeah, we don't know if there's bricks or not. And, and um, I would say a lot of glass. Uh, secondly, they have different shapes. I don't know about their uh, shapes exactly. Um, let's see. Let's see. I would just say, but the traditional house makes me imagine. Um, or makes me think about a house of Aboriginal and we would say people. Finally, I don't know about the furniture in these houses, but I can, I would say, make a guess. Um, in my point of view, in the modern house, uh, it probably, you would say something like it probably, if you're making a guess. Um, has a lot of modern furniture, uh, and then I put a comma there, such as technology equipment. Otherwise, in the traditional house, um, it probably only has simple furniture, and I think I would say it would be quite difficult me for it would be quite difficult for me to stay in. And I would say there. Okay? Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. Okay. Maria, did you want to read your number one? Yes. Um, okay. Let me scroll up. It looks like the architect was inspired by a spaceship <laughs> when designing the modern house. The house to the left has no corner, a lot of windows in the front and a veranda on the roof. The hut to the right is made of hay and clay. It is shaped like, like an eagle, eagle. It gives protection from the sun, but what if it rains or if a hailstorm comes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, good. Probably not a hailstorm in that environment. <laughs> no. <laughs> it looks pretty dry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it does look like a spaceship. Isn't there a French uh, architect who made houses like that? 
Um, did you guys ever learn about that? Le Corbusier or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. I think Are I there any mistakes in my text? No. No, no mistakes. Yeah. Okay. No. I think this is too short for as an answer for a TOEFL question. Isn't it like yeah. too short? Yeah, for a TOEFL essay question. That wasn't really an essay question, though. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Good. Yeah, the, the TOEFL, for the essays, yeah, you need at least, uh, I think the ideal to get a high score would be a five-paragraph essay. It's a pretty common mm -hmm. way. In Sweden, do, do you write five-paragraph essays? Is that how people write things, or not necessarily? Like an essay? Like an essay? Well, yeah, um, like in school, like in school, middle school, and in high school. I uh, think it's kids longer. Kids in the United States really learn how to write that as like the beginning, as one type of writing. It's called the five paragraph essay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think we have such <laughs> thing here, but the essays yeah. I remember are like longer, or maybe it's sure. just perhaps because well, I really this, like to write long. Well, this a five paragraph essay would be one that you write like for a test where mm -hmm. you only have maybe like a half an hour. If you go home and take, you know, have your homework and you're writing a paper, then it would be longer. But an essay is just a short okay. mm -hmm. essay. Yeah. That they do in class, maybe, or something like that. Okay, is anybody else ready to read anything? Yeah, I finished the second one. Okay. Okay, let it go ahead and read. Okay. I can see a floating market for a type of hats and boats. I will say it's from an Asian country, maybe Vietnam or Taiwan. At first sight, you can see it's very crowded. I think that people I think that people from those areas are very healthy because their food is grown without pesticides or pollution. That is why they live a lot of years like Japanese. Okay. I can see a floating market and I would say um, oops. Faith, oh, <laughs> hold on, I just, Control Z. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, <laughs> okay, I would say here, uh, I can, see, I can see a floating mic market based on the type of hats and boats. Period. I would say it's from an Asian and capitalize the A, an Asian country, um, maybe Vietnam or Taiwan. At first sight, you can see it's very crowded. I think that people from those areas are very healthy because their food is grown without pesticides or pollution. That is why they live a lot of years, like, and I would say the Japanese. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of fun, huh? Riding around on the boat. It's like a yeah, traffic jam. I think it's, yeah, it's hard to move between all those yeah. boats. <laughs> yeah, how do they get through there? Looks like it's all women, too. I don't see any guys. Okay, just let me know when you're ready. If anybody's yeah, ready, are you I'm ready? ready with number two. <laughs> okay. Uh, the canal, canal is filled canal. with boats. Mm -hmm. Canal is filled mm -hmm. with boats, probably with boats, which are filled with fruits, vegetables, and flowers. It looks like a floating market. The woman in the boats are m maybe merchants or on their way to the market to sell their commodities because the returning boats are empty. The returning boats almost tip over because all the weight is in one end. Uh, the ca canal is very narrow but clearly there are traffic rules. The woman, women steer their boats with sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just women in both places there and there. Women. Ah, okay. I always. Yeah. I never remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the canal is filled with boats, which are filled with fruits, vegetables, and flowers. It looks like a floating market. Uh, the women in the boats may be merchants on their way to the market. Um, I don't 
take Winnie to Commodore to sell their commodities because the returning boats are empty. The returning boats almost tip over because all the weight is, and we would say, um, at one end. Uh, the canal is very narrow, but clearly there are traffic rules. The women steer their boats with sticks. Yes. Or paddles. Looks like a paddle. Okay. It may be. You know that word, yeah. too? Paddle. Paddle okay. is more convenient, yeah. Well, I, I wasn't sure if it was with a paddle or a stick, but it uh, looks like that one lady I can see has a paddle. That one right there in the red shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it could be paddles or stick. Yeah. Oh yeah, were you looking at the one with the, the 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 blue shirt on where it looks like it's tipped up a little bit? Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I wonder if there are traffic rules. It looks Yeah, I don't I don't know. Or a lot of <laughs> yelling maybe. Hey, get out of my uh, way. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Steer it's okay. Steer for a for a canoe. Or you can row. You can row a canoe. You can uh, paddle. You can paddle. You can stir, or you can uh, row. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Usually in a canoe, you would paddle. In in a rowboat, you would uh, row, because you have usually two two paddles in a rowboat, both sides. Um, yeah. And you can stir. Stir is more like, uh, or steer, sorry. Steer, it steer means you're like change, changing the direction. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa, can I read the mind? Yes. Hold the on, second one. Okay. And uh, let me just say, uh, Grecia, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Uh, did you get to the the link for the Google document so you can start writing? Yeah, I just put it into the Google chat if you want to click on it. So since, since we've already started the class, people are just um, writing. And then when okay. they're done writing, when they're done writing, they just tell me. And then they read it. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Who? Facunda, you want to read? Okay. The third one. Second one. Oh yes, the second one or the or the third. Okay. How about you do the second one and then the third one? Okay. In the picture, I can see the most important avenue of Venetia. It seems to be a bottling. Furthermore, they are carrying a lot of fruit and flowers, so could be next could be next to the market or an important commercial center. Okay. So you think that's Venice? <laughs> I I think so. <laughs> the people look Asian though. Yeah, yeah, maybe, they are, maybe they are a lot of tourists. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Immigrants. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, well, just pretend. In the picture, I can see the most important avenue of Venice. Okay, it seems to be, uh, let's see, I would say getting uh, bottled up. Bottled up. Furthermore, they are carrying a lot of fruit and flowers, so they could be next to the market or an important commercial center. Okay, good. Okay. All right, and you want to do number three as well? Okay. Okay. Nobody teach you how to be a good father or mother or mother so you must learn it while you ground uh, therefore it's possible it's possible that some people doesn't know how to teach to their own child however I know a lot of people who teach to his son or daughter on or daughter and mm -hmm. he do it very well 
In the other hand, some person has the knowledge to teach some issues like geography or math. In the case, in that case, it's very important that your children get a tutor, tutor, tutor for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So here we go. Nobody teaches you how to be a good father or mother. Mama. So you must learn it. Um, would you say um, on the job? <laughs> I, or what did you mean while you're growing up? I would. Yeah, I think you want to so say so. You must, you must learn, learn it, it while you while you are growing, growing, getting more older. Okay, but do you do you mean like when you already are a parent, or before you even become a parent? No, no, in the middle of that. At the same time. Before. Okay, so then I would say. Um, so nobody teaches you how to be a good father or mother, so you must learn it while you are on the job, <laughs> is what we say. Um, okay. That means while you're a parent, you're learning how to be a parent. Okay, <laughs> therefore, it it is possible that some people don't, don't know how to teach their own children. However, I know a lot of people who teach um, their, I would say, whoops, Okay. Teach. I know a lot of people who teach to. Okay. I'd say their sons or daughters. So you, do, you do it by instinct. Yes. Daughters. Right, you do it by instinct. And they do it very well. And then we would say, on the other hand, some people, because it's the plural of person, so some people don't have the knowledge to teach, whoops, to teach some issues. So we would say, instead of the word issues, we would say uh, subjects, some subjects like geography or math. In that case, it is very important that your children get a tutor for that. Okay? Okay. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Uh-huh. You're welcome. Anybody else ready for number two or three? Yeah. Three, yeah, three. Lend it. Okay. Lend it. Go ahead and then Maria. Okay. Yes. Parents are the first ones that teach their own kids. I think the best way parents can teach their children is by giving a good example. So kids will catch it without knowing it. I learned from my parents not because they were teaching me or telling me, just because they were conducting themselves in a good way and giving an example with their actions. Okay, good. Yes, parents are the first ones that teach their own kids. I think the best way parents can teach their children is by, can we say, um, providing a good example. So kids will catch it without knowing it. Um, I learned from my parents, not because they were teaching me or telling me, just because they were conducting themselves in a good way and giving, um, I would say, providing an example uh, with their actions. Yeah. You can either say with their actions or by their actions. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, Marie Jose, which number two? Number two. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the phone will show us a floating market where people sell their vegetables and fruits. There are many canoes full of healthy food and some flowers. In addition, the market is located in a kind of a river canal. Finally, I think that the area of the canal is too straight and they have to expand the canal due to the population of the market and maybe introduce a kind of a schedule to organize uh, to organize the city. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. The photo shows shows us a floating market where people sell their vegetables and fruits. There are many canoes full of healthy food and some flowers. In addition, the market is located in a kind of a 
uh, Udis would say canal. Uh, finally, I, I mean, you could say river or canal, but it's more like a canal because it's just small there. Um, finally, I think that the area of the canal is too, I think you mean narrow. And they have to expand the canal to, or you could say they have to widen it. Widen the canal due to the population of the market and maybe introduce a kind of schedule to organize the selling. Okay. Yeah, yeah because yeah. It's, a, it's a mess. I think that uh, <laughs> too many people here. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if, like, if it's, they're going, like, if on the side those are, like, shops or what? I don't know. Side. I don't know how the people you know, jump jump on onto the canal and pick up their fruits or something. I don't yeah, know. yeah. It looks like they're kind of watching them go by. Maybe the those are the places where they go to pick up some stuff too. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, maybe they have they have. I don't know the the name in, in English. Um, where the tools when you want to fish something. Uh huh. The bait. They, yeah, the bait, oh. some something like that, or to yeah. pick up the the food or the vegetables. Uh huh. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I just found it on the internet. I thought it looked cool, <laughs> but I'd never seen anything like it. So, too bad um, Tan's not here. Maybe I don't know if it is in Vietnam or not. Tang, is that um looks familiar to you at all? Nong, are you still with us? Something happened. It dropped out. Hi, hey, Gretchen, did you get started? But I'm confused what number we are. Um, you Actually, we have about seven different ones. They're in um, red, and they're highlighted a little bit in yellow. And everybody's just picking whichever one they want to start with, and then writing that uh, answer to that one first and then you just tell me and then I go and find it where you wrote it you put your name there and then um, right so you can you can pick anyone if you scroll down the pages you'll see where a lot of people are writing and then you'll see the number and then the question uh, okay thank you so you can you can pick anyone you want to start with okay okay yeah uh, Lisa I finished okay Ahmad yeah uh, okay. Total question, the first paragraph, I think, yeah, the first paragraph. Oh, look, Hisham's in there, too. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm going down. I'm almost there. Hi, Tan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead yeah. and read. I totally disagree with this statement. In my opinion, we have two good reasons uh, to study the past. The first one is that we should study the past as experiences. Sorry, but uh, yeah, that we have to learn from. The second one is that, that we should evaluate our decisions that we have made made, uh, made it uh, in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, the past is, is experience. For example, I have I've had many. Sorry, someone. Is, uh, yeah, I've had many experiences on judging someone based. Uh, on uh, on their education level, I said there because I don't know if he or she. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the co-workers in my job have a PhD in management. He has made mistakes in his in his life uh, that I would bet even simplest uh, plumber or street cleaner would avoid it. In addition, evaluating our decisions that we have. Uh, that we have made so long is very important and sometimes crucial. Life is tricky. We have got to make our our choice as fast, accurate, and confident as it should be. Studying the past would be helpful to improve our ability to do so. In conclusion, studying the past is like adding experience to our life. Our decisions in the, pa in the present moment could depend uh, on the past uh, and and what we have uh, been through. Okay. Good. All right. So let me go to the top here. All right. I totally disagree with this statement. In my opinion, we have two good reasons to study the past. 
past. The uh, capitalize there. The first one is that we should study the past. The past as experiences that we have to that we I would say that we can learn from. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Can I say good or good learn from? That we uh let's see. First hold on. The first one is that we should study the past um well we could say I would say it completely different here. So the first one is that we should study the past. We could say something like in order to learn from those experiences. Yeah. Okay. The second one is that we should evaluate our decisions that we um Okay, we should we should let's see. That we should evaluate our decisions. To see, like, to see if they were um, good or bad. Is that what you mean? Or do you want to evaluate them so you know if they were yeah. right or wrong or something, good or bad? You could say, um, uh, or right or wrong. I, you say both. I meant, I meant uh, uh -huh. that uh, um, the the way that we take the decisions. Not if it's uh, re really good or bad, but the way okay. we we uh, make this decision. Okay. So the second one is that we should evaluate our. Um, mm, let's see. We would say something like our uh, uh, decision making processes. Something like that. Or uh, evaluate how we take our decisions. How we make. Okay. Yeah. That would be good. Okay. The second one is that we should evaluate how we make um, decisions. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. This, is, <laughs> this computer is a little s slow. Okay. All right. The past is experience. For example, I've had many experiences um, on judging someone based on. Um, Okay, I've had many experiences of judging, I would say, of judging okay. someone based on their education. We just would say education, and one of when we say on their education, it implies that it's the level of education that they have. Yeah. One of um, the coworkers in my job had a PhD in management. He I would say he made mistakes in life that I would bet even the I would say the the simplest plumber or street cleaner would have I would say would have um, yeah, avoided yeah mm. or would have been able to avoid or something like that would have avoided. Mm -hmm. Okay, in addition, evaluating our decisions that we have made um, so long, like long ago. Do you mean um, the past decisions? Yeah. Uh, I mean, evaluating. I okay, let's see. How, let's see. How about keeping with what you said above? In addition, in addition evaluating how um, we have made. Decisions is very important and sometimes crucial. Um, I would say here to add more clarity, it's crucial for learning. Life is tricky. We've yeah. got to make our choices as fast, accurate, and um, confident as I would say we can. Studying the past would be helpful to improve our ability to do so. In conclusion, studying the past is like adding experience to our life. Our decisions in the present moment could depend on what we have been through. Okay. Good. Mm. 
playing on paragraph, is it? Yeah. Those are... That's good. Okay, we have about nine more minutes, and I'm going to have to um, end on time tonight because I actually have another class right after this, so I'll have to get to that one. So if you want to just finish up what you're writing and get a chance to read it, now would be a good time. So who's ready can I do num read? Can I do number four? Yep. Okay. Yes. Uh, dear friend, even though I have not been able to do any training for one week now because of my shin injury, I hope to be fit for the game on Saturday. Please come and watch the game. I would like you to cheer on my team. It will be so much fun. I promise to perform my very best if you come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> even though I have not been able to do any training for one week now, please come and watch the game. I would like you to cheer on my team. Uh, it will be so much fun. I promise you for me. Yep, good. No corrections. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. <are> you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the same, the same question. Okay. Where is it? In Hesham. <laughs> I'm I'm addressing to Hesham. <laughs> oh, that's funny because I thought Hesham <laughs> yeah, was here. Yeah, you thought it was Hesham. Yeah, I because <laughs> Lendit is like on one page and then Hesham is on another page. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see now. Go. Okay, go ahead. Hisham. Okay. Hisham. <laughs> What's up, bro? Just to tell you that for the past week, I've been sick. I even asked for permission at the work to absence all the past week. Although I'm sick, I will go with you to the soccer game. I hope I will be better for the weekend. I will go with you, although I don't like soccer. Hope to hear you. <laughs> hope, hope to hear from you before we can land it. Yeah, I don't like That's soccer. Funny. I know, I remember. And it that's funny, you don't like soccer and the Brazilians don't like carnival. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's up, bro? Okay, I would just say put a question mark there. Um I would just say I I just want to tell you that for the past week I've been sick. I even asked for permission uh to I would say to be <laughs> to be absent from work um, all, all last week. I would just say that. Okay. Although I'm sick, comma, I will go with you to the soccer game. Period. I hope I will be better for the weekend. I will go with you. <laughs> uh -huh. Although I don't like soccer. Um, I hope to hear from you before the weekend. Okay, so just for a little bit of a kind of a subtlety in English, you can say I will go with you, although I don't like soccer. It has a little bit different meaning than if you said I will go with you even though I don't like soccer. Okay. So, so even though would mean more like you want him to know that you don't really like it, <laughs> but you're going with him. <laughs> okay, yeah. even though. So either way. I'll leave it there, but you can just know that. You can also say, even though. Even though. It's okay. like, you say that a lot, like if you say, like, even though I don't like pizza, I'm willing to go to get pizza with you. So, okay. yeah. Even though. So it's like, I don't like it, but I'll even I'll go do with it. stuff. Yeah, okay, I'll do it. Stuff. Yeah. Fernando, are you around? you want to read? I'm ready for the... Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, do you want to read? Okay. How is it going, buddy? Okay, good, yeah. I write this email because I can communicate with you the past week. The reason was that I was so sick last week. I got a fever and a stomach ache. But let me tell you that I'm ready for our soccer game this weekend. Okay. All right. All right, how's it going, buddy? Question mark. I write this email because I can't communicate. I let's see. I would say I haven't. I haven't been able to communicate with you the past week. Uh, period. The reason was that I was so sick last week. Um, let's see. I might just say like this. All right. Semicolon. I got a fever and a stomach ache, 
Uh, I guess two words. Okay. But let me tell you that I am ready for our soccer game this weekend. Okay. Good. Okay, Maria Jose. Oh, I'll be there. I hope you, yeah. I hope you will be too. See you then. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Uh, uh, Maria Jose. Yeah, the poor one. Uh, dear Manuel, hi, how are you? I want to tell you that I have been sick last day. Last day. But the doctor said me I will be better for Friday. I know we have a meeting on Sunday to watch the game. So don't worry, I will be able to go with you. Even though I don't like football so much, I love you and I promise you it long time ago. <laughs> okay. Okay, dear Manuel, hi, how are you? I wanted to tell you that I have been sick. And we say... Um, for the past okay. few days, yeah. Okay. But the doctor told me, told me I will be better for Friday. Capitalized. I know uh, we have a meeting on Sunday to watch the game, so don't worry. I will be able. So don't worry, oh. comma. I will be able to go with you, even though I don't like football so much. Um, I love you, and I promised uh, you. you I promised you, I would just say I'd go a long time ago. Right. Okay. okay. Aha, uh -huh, you're welcome. Okay, three minutes left. Who wants to read? Anybody? Lucas, would you like to read? Okay. Can I read? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, after Lucas, then you can go. Uh, uh, Maria, it's been ages since the last time we talked. I'm sorry I couldn't go to your house last week. The problem is that I have been sick, so I was in bed. Unfortunately, the soccer game was cancelled, so if you like, we can go this weekend. Would you like me to give you a lift? Please send me a message and we can arrange a time. Lucas. Okay, good. It's been ages since the last time we talked. I'm sorry I couldn't go to your house last week. The problem is that I have been sick. And then I would just put a comma there. So I was in bed. Unfortunately, the soccer game was canceled. Comma. So if you like, comma, we can go this weekend. Oh. Um, would you, okay. would you like me to give you a lift? Please send me a message, and we can arrange a time. Okay. Great. Okay. okay thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Gracie, did you want and to? number five. Number okay. five. Okay. I think uh -huh. TV has advantage and disadvantage. I have serious reasons. First, it depends a lot of what you watch. Take for example, if you watch an entertainment program, you will have fun. But in the, in the case of people that watch documents about history, I think that people could learn important things, and this could be a good influence in us. But on the other hand, on the other hand, there are a lot of TV programs that are totally waste of time. People usually like watch that kind of programs. <laughs> okay, good. All right, I think a TV has advantages and disadvantages. I have several reasons. Oops. First, it depends a lot, I would say, um, on oops, on what you watch. Take, for example, um, if you watch an entertainment program, um, you'll have fun. But in the case of people that watch, uh, we say, documentaries, documentaries about history, I think that people could learn important things and this could be a good influence on us. But on the other hand, there are a lot of TV programs that are a total, let's say, you could either say a total waste of time or that are um, totally a waste of time. So <laughs> either way, um, okay, programs that are you. a total waste of time, people usually like to watch uh, these <laughs> kinds of programs. Like Jersey, <laughs> Jersey Shore. <laughs> okay, good. All right, you guys. Um, I gotta go to the next class. So uh, thanks for coming and writing, you guys. It's always fun to um, thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you. Read your writing and have you guys in class. Thank, thank you. you Lisa. for coming. Thank okay. you, Lisa. Thank you. Take care. Bye.